This is what we're working towards in this tutorial. It may not seem all that interesting, but you can use it as a basis to do a lot of interesting things. Hello everyone, I'm Aaron from One Hacker Band, and today I'm going to show you how to make a servo move with MIDI. This tutorial is for someone who might have a little bit of experience with music software and at least know what a microcontroller board is, and maybe some beginner coding experience. Here's what you'll need if you would like to follow along. You'll need a Teensy 4.1 if you want to follow along exactly, or another board that supports MIDI USB. Your Teensy will need to have the header pin solder on. You can order them with pins if you don't like soldering. Next you'll need a breadboard and jumper wires. If you're unfamiliar with the breadboard, they're used for prototyping and testing circuits before they're permanently assembled. Next you'll need a servo. My favorite for many reasons is the Go Build a 2000 series. Finally, you'll need a DC power supply. Don't be tempted to use the power coming from your USB through the board to power your servo. That's just asking for a problem. You should check your servo specifications and make sure you get a power supply that has the required volts and amps. For example, these are the specs for the Go Build a Speed Servo I'm using and you can see it will run between 4.8 and 7.4 volts. And at 4.8 volts, it'll stall at two amps. Stalling means that it's exerting its maximum force. I'm using this five volt two amp DC power supply. I'm also using this little terminal strip to make connecting it easy. Be careful with this, 5 volts isn't enough to get shocked by, but if it's plugged in it's really easy to short out these two exposed ends, so don't plug it in until you have everything completely connected. I've put a link in the description and on my website that has all of these items if you need to pick any of them up. I do make a small commission if you buy through those links, so I would really appreciate it. Then the final thing you'll need is a computer with some kind of audio production software that can send and receive MIDI signals. I use Ableton with my setup, so that's what I'm going to show. But just about any music making software can do this. Alright, so let's start getting things hooked up. First, let's seat the Teensy on the breadboard. Be sure you're bridging the gap between the two sections of connected groups of holes. There's normally a gap here you can see. Next, we're going to connect the power supply to the power supply bus. I've already connected the two jumper wires in the terminal strip. Positive here will go to positive, and negative will go to negative. Now the servo and the board need to share ground, so we'll put a jumper between the board's ground and the ground bus. The board will draw power from the USB, so we're not going to connect the positive bus to the board. The ground on the Teensy is this small G here. So I'm going to connect there. Let's connect down here. Finally, we'll connect the servo. We're going to use pin 0 on the Teensy, which is here. And that will go to our control wire. The control wire on this servo is the white wire. A lot of times they're yellow on a lot of servos. That's why I use the yellow wire here. And then we're going to connect the power from the power bus, the positive. We'll go to the center. And I'm just pushing these into the connector. Then the ground. We'll go to ground. And finally, I'm going to put on a servo horn so that we can see what the servo's doing. Okay, time to plug this in and let's get coding. Teensy boards use a modified version of the Arduino IDE. There are plenty of tutorials on getting started with that, so I'm not going to be getting into that in this tutorial. So let's get started with the blank sketch. As long as you have the Teensy modifications installed, you should be able to go to Tool, Board, Teensy Duino, 
and you should be able to select Teensy 4.1 here. You'll also need to go to Tools USB Type and set that to Serial plus MIDI. When I'm starting a project like this, I like to start with something simple, just to make sure everything's working right. So let's first make the built-in test LED on the Teensy blink when it receives any MIDI message. Let's start by setting a variable named LED to the test LED pin number, which on the Teensy 4.1 is 13. Then in the setup, we want to set this pin's mode to output. Then in our loop, we want to use an if statement to determine if we've received a MIDI message, any MIDI message. USB MIDI read returns true if any MIDI message is waiting to be read. Then all we want to do is flash the test LED with the digital write set to high on the LED pin. And we don't want it to stay on forever. So we want to set a short delay, let's say 100 milliseconds, and then turn back off the LED by setting it back to low. And that's it. Let's compile and send it to the Teensy. Make sure you have it connected with the USB cable, and let's give it a try. First, we'll have to save it. As I said, I'm going to be using Ableton, but feel free to use the software of your choice. If we've done everything right in Ableton, we should see Teensy MIDI selectable under MIDI 2 on any MIDI channel. If not, check your MIDI preferences and make sure Track is selected for Teensy MIDI Out. I know in Ableton to send MIDI, I can simply create a MIDI loop, turn on the MIDI editor preview, and hit any of the keys and it will send MIDI to the output. And there we have it. You can see the light is flashing. That means we are receiving and responding to MIDI information. Okay, great. Let's get the servo involved. We have just a little bit more code to add to get there. First, let's comment out the LED blink code. Next, we'll need to include the servo library and create a variable of type servo. We'll call it myServo. Next, if you remember, we connected the servo control wire to pin 0. So let's create a variable to keep up with that. Then we need to run a function on our myServo object called attach. This is just telling myServo which pin it should use for its control signal output. Then we're going to call another function called write and set the position to 90. Using the servo library, you can set the position from 0 to 180 degrees. Be aware that it depends on the servo to, to interpret this degree position, so it's not always a one-to-one -one movement. You'll need to experiment a little with this. I'm setting it to 90, which should be right in the middle of the servo's rotation. Next, I'm going to add some code in the USB MIDI read condition that will only be run when MIDI has been received. First, I'm going to set a variable of type byte called type. This is going to hold the type of MIDI message that we've received. Then we'll retrieve the type by calling get type and store it into the variable type. Then we're going to use a switch to check if the type matches what we're interested in, which is probably the most common type of MIDI message, the note on and note off.
And finally, we'll add two different servo positions, one for a node on message and one for a node off message. We'll move the servo position to 160 degrees if it receives a node on and back to the default 90 when it receives a node off. And that's it. Let's upload this and give it a try. Okay, back in Ableton, I'm going to do one thing to make it a little easier for you to see. I'm going to change the MIDI from setting in the channel that's sending to the Teensy. I'm going to change it to my MIDI keyboard. And there we have it. Press any key, and it sends a note on signal, which triggers the servo to move. And then when I release it, and it sends a note off, it's triggered to go back to the middle position. Very cool. But what if we only wanted to do this when we press just one specific key? Maybe a uh, middle C. Let's make a small change in the code to do this. We need to collect another piece of information from the MIDI message that we can test against. The USB MIDI library calls the specific MIDI note number pressed data1 for a note on or off type message. So let's add another variable called data1. And we'll get that data by calling get data1 and store it into the data1 variable. And then we'll wrap the whole switch statement with an if statement that tests for MIDI note 60, which is middle C. And that's it. Let's upload this to the board and try it out. There we go. It's only responding when I press middle C and not when I press any other notes. Now this may not seem like anything super impressive, but I think if you think about this creatively, you could come up with some really cool ideas for what you could do with it. Maybe even build a whole band around the idea. In any case, I hope you found this informative. If you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, please stick around and let me know. We could go into more advanced MIDI messages, such as CCs, or maybe different kinds of actuators like solenoids or step motors. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see, and it'd be great if you'd like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.